Each year, scientists, researchers, and everyday people make incredible discoveries, helping us to better understand the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at interesting discoveries. The US tested a laser weapon that can destroy an aircraft mid-flight. In 2020, for the very first time, the US Navy managed to successfully stop an aircraft while it was flying by using a directed energy weapon, in this instance, a laser. In the May of 2020, a statement was released by the Navy describing the lasers as being efficient and effective ways to defend themselves against enemies' drones or small armored boats. This laser tech so far has solely referred to defense, not attack, and has successful trial runs. The Navy's Pacific Fleet understandably did not disclose where exactly this laser weapon system was tested, only that on May 16, 2020, it was tested somewhere in the Pacific. Despite the vague descriptors here, there were images and videos released that show the transport dock ship USS Portland using the high-energy class solid-state laser to take down a drone from mid-air. Directed energy weapons have been under construction since the 1960s, and now they are being put to, hopefully, good use, though only time will tell. Directed energy weapons, the tech behind both the Navy's aircraft disabling laser and the Army's future force field, are a series of electromagnetic systems that convert chemical and electrical energy into radiated energy. This energy is then focused, or directed, to a specific target, allowing the target to be damaged, in this instance, neutralizing the enemy weapon. Whilst for now, the hopes and aspirations of this particular directed energy laser are those of defense, who knows what this technology will be used for in the future. Massive sinkhole in China has led to the discovery of a world-class geological wonder. A second expedition into a massive sinkhole located in the Guangxi forest of China has revealed compelling details of a world-class geological discovery. The sinkhole connects to a massive cave system that was first discovered through a Hong Kong expedition, which gave it the name Hong Kong Hainting Hall. The more recent expedition in 2018 examined its volume through 3D scanning. The sinkhole was found to be 328 feet wide and 656 feet long, and as deep as 387 feet. Due to its massive size, geologists have deemed the sinkhole cave complex as world class. Footage from the expedition showcases the interior of the connected cave hall. Hong Kong Hating Hall features clear blue waters, collapsed rocks and craters, halls and corridors, as well as beautiful stone pillars and cave pearls. The cave hall is also connected to an underground river that feeds into the Panyang River. This 2018 expedition was led by a multinational team of 19 people from China and the UK, headed by Zhang Huanghai of the Institute of Karst Geology and Andy Evis of the British Caving Association. The team used only one 656-foot-long rope to descend into the sinkhole interior. From there, they used 3D scanning to map the cave complex. Researchers hope to use this technology to uncover the origins of the sinkhole in the future. Typically, sinkholes occur when an underground cave collapses, often from water erosion. These sinkholes can reveal unexplored underground cave systems, like the magnificent Hong Kong Hating Hall. Has the lost island of Cain been found? While some islands are disappearing from the face of the earth, never to be seen again, there are other landforms that are suddenly being rediscovered. In 2015, a team of archaeologists from several countries found an island off the Turkish peninsula that they were able to identify as the lost city of Cain. This city was the location of the Battle of Arganusse, in which the Spartans were soundly defeated by the Athenians in 406 BCE and which constituted one of three ancient Arginus Islands. Now, only two of these islands remain, and are known now as the Garib Islands. The ancient city of Cain has been referred to throughout several ancient texts, but nobody was able to definitively say where it might have been until recently. The discovery was made by a team of researchers analyzing rock layers underground on a peninsula along the Turkish coast, 
which revealed that the tip of the peninsula had previously been an island that had joined the mainland over thousands of years of sediment buildup, as the land bridge between the tip of the peninsula and the mainland consisted only of loose soil and rock. When they realized this, the team immediately suspected that it might be the long-lost island of Cain and set about analyzing pottery shards, architecture, and historic artifacts in the surrounding area to attempt to gather clues of the island's ancient history. They quickly discovered that the mystery of where the ancient island of Cain once stood had been finally solved, and the landmass had been right under archaeologists' noses the entire time. This is an important discovery for historians and archaeologists, as Cain was an incredibly important ancient city that played a large role in many major events of the time. Placed at a critical location on the Turkish coast, Cain likely acted as a stopping point and way station along the trade and travel routes of the day, especially those headed to Lesbos and Adramatean in the north and Alea and Pergamon in the south. Its location was likely the reason that it acted as the setting for the aforementioned Battle of Arganusae during the Peloponnesian conflict. Now that its location has finally been identified, more definitive archaeological research can occur to attempt to learn more about the historical events that likely occurred there and how the people who called the island of Cain their home lived. It is not every day that historians can claim to have recovered a long-lost island, and there is no doubt that researchers will take every advantage of this discovery. Element found in bones and teeth detected 12 billion light years away. Although it might seem as though human beings and the planet on which we reside do not have that much in common with the limitless expanse of the cosmos which stretches infinitely and supposedly for now lifelessly beyond our atmosphere, this is not altogether true. In fact, because the cosmos forged our Earth, traces of all of the elements within our bodies still exist scattered across the solar system. As scientists discover these small traces of elements, they can get a better idea of how the universe was formed and the overall life cycle of the resulting celestial bodies. Recently, researchers working at the European Southern Observatory uncovered fluorine, which is commonly found in our bones and teeth, in a large mass of gaseous clouds in a galaxy about 12 billion light-years away. This means that the light from this galaxy that we are viewing is 12 billion years old and is giving scientists a picture of what the universe was like at the young age of only 1.4 billion years. This discovery is significant because it is the earliest example of fluorine in a star-forming galaxy within the universe. Because fluorine is created within the core of stars and emitted when they eventually fade, and these faint clouds of fluorine radiation were discovered at fairly early points in the timeline of the universe, scientists theorize that these early fluorine-producing stars lived fast and fade away young. When it comes to the relative lifespan of the cosmos, which is almost 14 billion years old, a star fading young means that it likely only lived a brief few million years at the most. Scientists speculate that these early fluorine-producing stars were massive wolf rayet stars that burn out quickly in supernova explosions. It seems that the creation of fluorine through the expiration of these stars likely is the reason that fluorine exists in our bodies at all. Scientists believe that these wolf rayet stars produced massive amounts of the element that is now so common in our bones and teeth during the earliest days of the creation of the universe. However, what they do not know is just how early fluorine entered the playing field, and it seems that this galaxy's production is rather remarkable. Chiaki Kobayashi, a professor at the University of Hertfordshire, said that, for this galaxy, it took just tens or hundreds of millions of years to have fluorine levels comparable to those found in stars in the Milky Way. Our measurement adds a completely new constraint on the origin of fluorine, which has been studied for two decades. So it seems that we may have early wolf rayet stars to thank for our excellent dental compositions as scientists continue to probe the outer reaches of the universe in order to discover other fascinating clues such as this. Astronomer finds one of the oldest stars. One of the most fascinating aspects of space is the fact that most of the pinpricks of light that we know of as stars are hundreds of millions of years old, as the star in question is light years away and may not even be in existence any longer. 
However, despite constantly gazing upon the light from incredibly ancient stars night after night, astronomers believe that they have located one of the oldest stars found to date. And not only that, but it appears that it dates all the way back to the second generation of stars that were formed after the original creation of the universe. The paper announcing this thrilling new discovery stated that we report the discovery of S plus J21040049, an ultra-metal poor star selected from its narrow band S plus photometry and confirmed by medium and high-resolution spectroscopy. These proof-of-concept observations are part of an ongoing effort to spectroscopically confirm low-metallicity candidates identified from narrowband photometry. Essentially, this means that this new star was discovered using a new process that measures light intensity in order to identify stars that have previously fallen under the proverbial radar when observed with other methods. Additionally, its ancient origin was able to be further verified by analyzing the unique chemical abundances of the star which appeared to be made up of only those components which would have been produced as a single first-generation star was born and faded away. While it is incredibly amazing that researchers were able to locate such an old star, this chemical information and the techniques learned from the process of uncovering the star may lead us to the eventual discovery of one of these first-generation stars, none of which have ever been located. No matter which way you look at it, the discovery of this ancient star is nothing short of a scientific breakthrough. When it comes to our knowledge of how the universe was formed and the circumstances under which the stars likely blinked into existence, much of our knowledge is conjecture based on what we have been able to observe about space so far. However, we have not been able to peer far enough into the past to sneak a peek at what things really looked like and how their differences could have led to the formation of early stars until now. For example, in the early days of the universe, before the first stars appeared, the building blocks of the world were restricted to mainly hydrogen and helium, with other elements being created through the thermonuclear fusion within the cores of the new stars. We can follow this breadcrumb trail of elements through the cosmos, and hopefully it will eventually lead to the discovery of one of the very first stars to ever exist. Discoveries such as this one can help us develop a more complete set of information surrounding the circumstances of what the universe looked like as it was coming into existence, which will then inform our understanding of how these circumstances interacted to create the infinite and expansive space that we are orbiting in now. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.